This is a powerhouse workstation for professionals, they're saying. That means Thunderbolt 3, right? Wrong. My solid state just turned to a floppy. Right, Righto, tell you there, champs, and yes, Microsoft have done it. Microsoft have just gone and released their new products. So we're talking Surface Book 3, we're talking a new Microsoft Go, some earbuds and some headphones, all right, <laughs> whatever. But anyway, the Microsoft Go, it's getting a new processor, bigger screen, yeah, it's cool. It's for the price of $3.99, what do you want? I mean, yeah, it's fine. It's perfectly fine. It's only for basic computing. As long as you know its limitations, it'll be fine. But if you have a look there at the Surface Book 3, well, not much has changed there, has it? Pretty much looks exactly the same as the last model, which is not a bad thing, because that thing is a piece of engineering, let me tell you there. Now, there is one thing missing on this laptop. You can see there's two USB Type A's. You've got the power connector that slit there. You have SD card reader, UHS-2, but look at that. It's not a Thunderbolt 3. That is indeed USB Type-C. They have a new dock as well, which is another USB Type-C dock. The processor that's going to go in it is this temp generation 1065 G7. Now, this is a really good part. It's a quad-core part. It's 15 watts, and it's going to have decent integrated graphics, which means you don't necessarily have to get the one with the graphics card because there is a 13.5-inch model and there is the 15-inch as well. They all share the same CPU. If you want to know a long-term review of these, my man from Laptop Retrospective, he done a two-year review on his Surface Book 2. So check that out. They really last a long time. They're durable. They're really good in this regard. I'm going to get stuck into them later. About the Thunderbolt 3. It's going to get fruity, so you might want to stick around. But um, let's stick to what it has at the moment. Temp generation CPUs, I said. Quad-core Ice Lake CPUs. And one of the benefits of those is, of course, Thunderbolt 3 built-in, which this is not taking the advantage of. Starts at 1590 without the graphics card for the 13.5 inch 2299 for the 15 inch that one does have a graphics card the gtx 1660 ti and businesses it says here businesses can get the quadro so the rtx 3000 quadro and that starts at 3499 so you're going to have to be a business to get that i don't know what goes on there how you get it but an rtx 3000 gpu that's actually based on the rtx 2070 so it is a serious graphics card and it does have a serious price at $3,500. So it's a good upgrade, beautiful display, you get the pen and all that sort of stuff. The versatility of being able to take that screen off and use it as a tablet computer. The battery life on these will be insane, like really insane, like well over 10 hours. Pretty much these Surface laptops have the best battery life out of any laptop I've reviewed. That's because they can put the battery in the screen and they can put the battery in the base as well. And because it's a 3x2 display, the 13.5 inch feels more like a 14 inch and the 15 inch feels, you know, somewhere a bit more than 15 inches because of that extra vertical height there. So a decent upgrade, no mention if it has Wi-Fi 6, so we don't know about that at the moment. Supposed to go on pre-order straight away. And it is a 127 watt package in the 15 inch. Now with the 13 inch, you can get a GTX 1650 Max-Q. With the 15 inch, you get the 1660 Ti. And if you want to know how to get the 1660 Ti in the 127 watt package, and that's because it's got a 15 watt CPU. So the XPS 15 has got a 45 watt CPU. So they cannot put a 1660 Ti in it because 130 watts, it's not enough power. And the last Surface Book did actually drain battery. Now, in terms of gaming, you should be able to play pretty much every game, 60 frames per second, you know, medium-high settings. The CPU will be a little bit of a bottleneck, but the integrated graphics should be fine on the 13.5-inch for stuff like Fortnite and stuff like that. But if you really want a game, you want a 1650 or the 1660 Ti in the 15-inch. So that's about it. Now, I want to get stuck into them. I want to read something from their blog. But have a look at this. Surface Book 3 is our most powerful laptop ever. Designed for professionals who need desktop level performance from anywhere. Yes, this is a powerhouse workstation for professionals, they're saying. That means Thunderbolt 3, right? Wrong. My solid state just turned to a floppy.
You're saying this for professionals. Powerhouse workstation. Performance anywhere. Where's the Thunderbolt 3, you numb nuts? Seriously. I read an article or a blog post about why they don't have Thunderbolt 3. It's because it's a security issue because you have direct connection to the CPU or something. Microsoft, what are you doing? I know for normal consumers, Thunderbolt 3, who cares, right? Most normal consumers will not even care. But when you're marketing this, the most powerful laptop ever designed for professionals, Professionals who need the desktop level performance anywhere. Give us Thunderbolt 3. That's what pros want. We want powerhouse workstations. What are you doing? Market to, you know, consumers. They don't care about that. Pros want it. And the excuse of, oh, it's not secure because you're getting a direct connection to the CPU. Biggest load of crap I ever heard in my life. Intel CPUs have that many vulnerabilities, it's not funny. I could write a thousand volume encyclopedia collection of books and I'd need that hundred volumes just to document all the security flaws Microsoft products have had over the years. It's just a load of crap. I have no idea. Apple are allergic to Wi-Fi 6 in their Macs and Microsoft are allergic to Thunderbolt 3. Just go, shove it up your clack. Like, seriously, piss off, Microsoft. If you don't know what Thunderbolt 3 is, you don't care about it, it's going to be a great laptop. There's no doubt about it. Catch you next one. Tally ho.